grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our consideration this morning is our Old Testament lesson from Daniel chapter 12. We Americans often tend to look at the 18th century, the 1700s in our country, through kind of rose-colored glasses. A time of great glory and heroic tales. Those early settlers of our country forged a civilization out of the wilderness. They also forged a national identity that we we still subscribe to, that Americans are people of liberty and equality, independence, strength, individuality. Those are still things we like to think about ourselves. These tiny little ragtag group of colonists are righteous, but because you are merciful. Daniel wasn't just hoping for a rebuilt city of Jerusalem. He was hoping, praying for a spiritual revival among the Jewish people. He was hoping for a great awakening. And God answered him, but not probably not in the way Daniel was thinking. God told him about a different great awakening, a great awakening that would happen at the end of time. And of course, that's God's message to us, too. We, we can look forward to the great awakening. You will awake to be delivered, and you will awake to shine with glory. It doesn't do a lot of good for us to look back at our American history through rose-colored glasses, because then we can't learn from mistakes. It also doesn't help us to look at the present and the future with rose-colored glasses. The Bible is very clear to us about what the end is going to be like, the end times. That in general, things are going to get worse and worse for the world, for the church, for us as individuals, until finally Jesus returns. In our lesson from Daniel, and also actually interesting to note that Jesus uses the same word in our gospel lesson, it's called a time of distress, a time of problems. We use kind of a, a military picture when we talk about saints' triumphant Sunday. Sometimes we talk about the church militant and the church triumphant. Right now, you and I, are in the church militant. We are an army. Now, we don't fight with guns and bombs. Our mission is not to kill those who don't agree with us. But we are an army. We're God's army. The church militant. And like every army, we don't always have victories. We don't always have success. We have defeats. We have setbacks. We have times of distress. Sometimes they're really big setbacks, like Jerusalem being destroyed and the temple being raised to the ground and the Jewish people being taken off into captivity. Or, like, oh, uh, there are fewer and fewer Americans calling themselves Christian. This was just in the, in the news a few days ago. The fastest growing segment of the population when it comes to religion are the nuns, not N-U-N, but N-O-N-E, those who say they have no religious affiliation. That's the fastest growing segment when it comes to religion in our country. That's a major setback. Sometimes the setbacks are smaller, like we could think of the members of divinity that we don't see here very often. You know, those who maybe we see on Christmas and Easter and not much else. That feels like a defeat. Maybe not quite as big as the whole church shrinking, but it feels like a defeat to us. Or 
we could think of how our, our schools, our low schools have been declining in enrollment for almost 20 years. And then sometimes the defeats are really personal. Paul talks about this. When he said that the good that I want to do, this I do not do. But the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. The Apostle Paul lays bare his struggle to us. That he wants to do good, but instead he sins. He wants to avoid sin, but it happens. That is the personal defeat that you and I deal with on a daily basis. It's so frustrating. We who know how much God has done for us, we know how much Jesus has done for us. We who know that we are forgiven, we still can't successfully go out and not sin. Sometimes we have victories here and there, but we have plenty of defeats. Every military commander knows that his army, his troops, are going to suffer defeat. They're going to suffer setbacks. No general, no army is victorious all the time. But every successful military commander also knows the most dangerous thing about defeats is what it can do to morale. And that's, that's God's concern for us as well. That we don't let these defeats, we don't let these setbacks, these times of distress, ruin our morale, cause us to lay down our weapons and, and give up. Don't give up. The Great Awakening is coming. You can look forward to this Great Awakening. It's coming, and this is why we can be so sure of it, because of who God is. Who is God? Well... We could preach every sermon for the rest of the year on that topic, right? In a certain sense, that's what we do. But I want to focus on two characteristics of God. First of all, God is just. When we say God is just, that means that God hates sin, he hates evil, and it must be punished. And that's a good thing. Imagine if God wasn't. Imagine if God tolerated evil. He would be a monster. He wouldn't be a God for us to love and worship. But God promises that justice is coming. Those who wanted nothing to do with Christ in this life, they're going to get their wish. They won't have Christ for eternity. Those who rejected the church will be rejected. And this is justice. Like every army, we have enemies. And part of this great awakening is that justice is finally going to come. The false church, which has plagued the real church forever, will be destroyed. It will be burnt to the ground. Remember the main tool that Satan tries to use to destroy the church. It's not physical persecution. It's false teaching. It's heresy. Because with that, he can lead people away from Christ. With them not even realizing what's happening. It's false teaching more than anything else that has plagued the Christian church. When you read the book of Revelation, that's actually the main enemy in Revelation, the main tool of the enemy. It's false teaching, it's heresy. At the Great Awakening, when Jesus returns, that will finally be put to an end. It will be defeated. The heretics will be punished. Those who deliberately mislead the people of God will receive what's coming to them. That's justice for them. You and I will no longer be bothered by them. We will not be deceived. That will be justice for us. God is just. God is also merciful. 
God is coming to us, Jesus is coming to us with mercy. The phrase used here in Daniel is that at that time, your people will be delivered. Because of the book. I'm not talking about the Bible. It's the book that, that, that's mentioned here. At that time, your people will be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. We sometimes call it the book of life. It's the book, mentioned more than once in Scripture, in which your names are recorded. The names of the elect. The names of those who are God's. Those who trust in Jesus' redemptive work. The Great Awakening was a wonderful thing for our country. But again, we shouldn't even look at that through rose-colored glasses. Because there were some negatives that came with the Great Awakening. The big one would be the major false doctrine, the major heresy that plagues American Christianity. It's a very American idea. Decision theology. You hear it. Watch preachers on TV. Listen to Christian radio. Pick up an average book in an average Christian bookstore and you'll probably come across it. You need to make a decision for Christ. You need to choose Jesus. That's not the book of life. The book of life tells us that God chose us. Your name was already written in that book before you even existed. The names of people who have not yet even been conceived are written in that book because God chooses us. We don't choose him. We're incapable of doing that. He chooses us. He writes our names down in that book. That's our guarantee yet. That the great awakening is coming because God is merciful. He will of your vision. When you get to be another 20, 30, 40 years older than me, death is a specter that can haunt you all the time. If you've never spoken to someone in their 80s or 90s, someone in a nursing home, you may not know how often they think about it. The phrase used here in Daniel, <coughs> many who are sleeping in the dusty ground. It's more than that we'll be sleeping in the dusty ground, it's also that we will become dust. My body will decay. You will become nothing but dirt. So let me finish reading. Many who are sleeping in the dusty ground will awake some to everlasting life. The great awakening is coming. The great awakening is the resurrection. When everything will be put right. When death will finally be destroyed itself. Death will be done away with. You and all those who trusted in Jesus as their Savior will rise from the dead. Our souls reunited with our bodies and yet it doesn't end there. The greatest wake, awakening is coming. You will be delivered. You will awaken to shine with glory. It's a beautiful picture used here. Those who have insight will shine like the brightness of the sky. And those who bring many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. From dusty ground, from dirt, from decayed organic matter to shining like the brightness of the sky. And shining like stars forever. That's picture language. The rest of scripture fills in the details. What does that mean? It means that the body you will have in the resurrection will be glorified like even Christ. Perfect. No longer will you need to wear glasses. No longer will you have diabetes. Whatever various health concerns you have, that will never happen again. You will have a perfect, glorified body. And you will be with Jesus forever. That's why the Great Awakening is something that we look forward to. Because it's our time of victory. It's our time of triumph. In August, August 24th, 1944, 
a small force of uh, Allied troops entered Paris for the first time since the Nazis had conquered it. And as they, the small force, as they entered town, the bells of Notre Dame started ringing. And then soon the bells from another church started ringing. And then the bells of another church started ringing. Soon all the bells of all the churches in Paris were clanging in triumph and victory. And then a few days later, when the rest of the Allied forces came in, they marched under the Arc de Triomphe, the same place that the Nazis had marched under years before. Only this time, there were crowds of people shouting and rejoicing. It was victory. It was triumph. We are the church militant now, but we will be the church triumphant. The losses will end. The defeats will end. We have victory. We have triumph to look forward to. That's why we look forward to the great awakening. Amen. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. Amen. Please stand. As generations of saints have done before us, let's confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. He got and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. You may be seated as we collect the thing offering. Please also sign the friendship registers in your future.